Welcome back to Fanfic Creations. This is our very first episode. We thought we'd have a special guest. We consider him to be, to be honest, one of the veterans of uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! fandom. And he's specially known for his work with our beloved Kaibo brothers. Today we have Iceblood. You can see his work on FF, fanfiction.net and other blogs too. I have uh, one other blog. It's a Tumblr blog called In Cold Blood. It's tied to, directly to my fanfiction account. So yeah, you can find me there. I also have a YouTube channel, but it's kind of, let's call it on indefinite hiatus at the moment. So I'm not sure I want to plug that, but I'm definitely on Tumblr. So uh, you can find me there. We were watching your videos, so we'd still recommend people go and check it out. So what we wanted to do is uh, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about your work, especially that um, in this episode we are featuring Paved with Good Intentions, which we think is one of your most iconic fan fictions in our you know, humble opinion. So I guess let's get started with the very beginnings. How did your journey start with Yu-Gi-Oh? Well, Yu-Gi-Oh for me was, it was not my first uh, anime, but it was pretty early on. I, I got started with Pokemon, and I think I watched an episode of Digimon when I was little. But a friend of mine told me about a new show that he found. I was about 12 years old, and, and a friend of mine told me, hey, there's this new show on weekends, and it's about a card game, and it's really cool. So I was like, okay. I kept it in the back of my head, but I didn't actually watch until like a couple weeks later. And the first episode I saw, it was on a Saturday morning. I believe my friend was over, uh, it was a sleepover and I was, he was still asleep when it came on, but it was, I think fans of the anime will definitely know this one. It's the second of Kaiba's duel with Pegasus, right in the middle of the first season uh, when he loses his soul. So that was my very first introduction, not only to the, the character uh, that would come to define my career, as a fan fiction writer, but also the entire thing. And since then, I, okay, uh, confession time. I have not watched the entire anime. I've watched most of it. Um, I, uh, but I, I have, uh, since that, um, most of my time, honestly, just creatively speaking, I, I'm, I'm trying to get, uh, get my writing into a more professional sphere, but most of my thinking as far as creative work is concerned, has to do with this uh, silly little show about a card game that uh, that I was introduced to at 12 years old. So it's uh, it's been a it's been a ride, and uh, this is a bit of a, of a first for me. So I apologize if I'm a little nervous. I have never actually been interviewed before. So uh, <laughs> I just want to say th uh, thank you for the opportunity. I suppose I will say. Well, we're we, it's it's an honor for us to have you, especially that you know this is our first interview too. So you know. We're nervous too, don't worry. <laughs> we, we appreciate that you're spending your time with Yu-Gi-Oh! To be honest, like even in, in our channel, we noticed that the Yu-Gi-Oh! fandom is, um, is the reason we exist, really. So we owe a lot to Yu-Gi-Oh! I guess. Um, I could see that because, I mean, many years old now. Actually, wow, I feel old. Um, <laughs> it's it's still going strong. Uh, the, the fandom at large and, and the, whole, the whole franchise is still going strong, so... Uh, I could see that. It's definitely the biggest fandom I've ever been a part of. Well, same here. Yeah. Um, that and Final Fantasy, so... Okay, so we know that you love the Kaiba Brothers. Why the Kaiba Brothers? What captured your interest there? Well, uh, like I said, the first episode I ever saw had to do with um, Seto's uh, sacrifice for Mokuba's sake uh, early on in the first season. That was a very striking moment, but... To be honest with you, it starts with the simple fact that up until I was 17, I was an only child. Uh, I grew up with effectively, I mean, my parents, my grandparents, and my two best friends, and that was about it. Um, so I was, uh, I'm not going to say I was lonely, but I was definitely isolated. And because I was an only child, sibling relationships in general just caught me. They fascinated me. In the case of uh, the, the Kaibas in particular, I'm, I'm going to be honest and say that uh, I was actually rather shallow. The biggest thing that caught me at first, the very first episode I saw, was that trench coat. That was... <laughs> a rock star. <laughs> that was it, exactly. It was just, I, I was like, I want to have that. That's a thing that I want. And I actually did wear a trench coat for a while in high school. But it wasn't I'm gonna... cool though, right? 
Well, <laughs> I'm going to say I'm thankful that I grew out of that. But to be honest with you, if I still had that coat and it still fit, I'd probably still wear it. So uh, maybe that doesn't mean much. But I mean, that's that's honestly where it started. Um, it was just I've always been fascinated by Seto in particular. And as far as I was concerned, you know, right from the beginning, you do not get one Kaiba without the other. So I, I just kind of learned to love them both. But it definitely started with him. Started with the tall one. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's kind of hard to miss, you know. He's always very memorable. So he he he's very striking. But to to be honest, more recently over the more recent years, Mokuba has surprised me on a number of levels. Just every time I I, I work with the characters and try and put a new story together, I learn something new about them. And that's the other part. I think that's the 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 core to the answer of why them is just because there's so many different layers to them and so many different things that I've learned about them over the years. And I figure any character that can stick with me for that long, any character, any group of characters, there's something special about them. And, you know, for that, I will always be thankful. So that makes sense. I, I, I highly doubt that uh, Mr. Takahashi is listening, but thank you very much <laughs> for defining my childhood. <laughs> Well, we're, we certainly hope he's listening, so <laughs> uh, we might send him a link, you know? Uh, who knows? We'll see. Okay, so other than the Kaiba Brothers, who do you like from the series? Uh, I thought about this, and I there there aren't many characters in this anime that I outright dislike. Uh, I like everyone on some level or another, but if I had to pin one, if you're, if you're asking me to pick one other one... I'm going to go with Ryo Bakura. Oh, really? Yes. Um, primarily because I feel bad. Uh, he definitely does not get much to do uh, throughout the course of the story. He's, you know, I'm going to say overshadowed by his darker half. Right. But he, I think because of that and because of the way that the story's built, he's very underestimated and underappreciated. But I always kind of keep an eye out for the quiet ones. They, they, they're, they remind me of me, I suppose, I would say. Especially when I got into the manga later on. Because I definitely started with the English version of the anime. And I, I, I got my fix from that for a good number of years. But when I was in college, I found out, oh, there's a comic. I didn't know that. And so I decided to go to the bookstore. And I found the first volume and I started reading it. And uh, Ryo has a, a more defined role in the early manga than I think he does in the anime. So he definitely caught my eye because he's, you know, he's, he's like me. He's quiet. He's unassuming. He's a gamer. And uh, at the time I found him, he had long hair, just like I did. Now I've, <laughs> since, I've since cut my hair, but that was also a thing that I noticed. No, that makes sense. Oh, well, people are saying that he, he is going to cut his hair. You know, I don't know where that rumor is coming from, but uh, I've seen some pictures flying around. I don't know if it's because people, you know, want to see him with short hair or if it's actually happening. Hmm. So. I'm not sure. I know there were a few redesigns because of the new movie that came out. Maybe that has something to do with that. But uh, the long hair definitely caught my eye when I first met him. So I, I guess if, 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 if I admire the Kaibas, and I, I, I don't want to say I don't admire Rio, but I, I definitely relate more to, to Rio, I think. <laughs> that makes sense. So we talked about the anime. Let's get back to your fanfics. What was your very first Yu-Gi-Oh fanfic? <laughs> Ooh. Okay, this is fun. Uh, it's called. <laughs> it is called Twist of Fate, uh, and it went up on my uh, fanfiction.net profile in 2004. But I wrote it quite a bit earlier than that. I, I wrote the first draft in high school. Um, I want to say I was a sophomore. So I was about uh, 13, going on 14, and I had only seen those first 20 some odd episodes. I knew nothing. I was new to writing in general. I'd only recently picked it up. I'd only done poetry up to that point. But I remember being struck by the, uh, the bond that I saw between the Kaibas when I uh, got into the earlier episodes. And it struck me, oh, this is something I want to explore. And so the story itself turned into a tragic exploration of what would happen if that bond were broken, but it turned into something completely different. But it was a, it was an interesting experience, though, because I learned what the fan fiction community was like, I suppose. Uh, it was the first story I'd posted on my profile that got any kind of extensive attention. 
And because of that, I guess I would say I was inspired to continue. Uh, that said, it is, what are we looking at now? Um, 14 years old? Uh, not quite, but close. Over a decade old, and it shows. Um, I, I am not particularly proud of it anymore, but it was definitely the first step in a long journey, so I guess I have to give it that. It's uh, the first step that counts. Um, and I believe it's still on your account, right? It is. I... Uh, I try not to delete anything on my account because once something is written and posted, it not only belongs to me, but it also belongs to the audience. And I have heard from people that still appreciate that work. So I figure it's not my place to deprive them of that. My it is still up to your work too. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. I'm glad you, I'm glad you kept with it because that <laughs> was not the, it was not the finest showcase. Oh, well, I, I remember I liked it. So that's something. Well, uh, thank you for that. I, I think it was pretty good for a high school kid who didn't know what he was doing, but uh, it's been a while now, and I, I see a lot of different problems. I guess I can't give it too much flack because it was new. I was new to it. I didn't know what I was doing yet, so I was just exploring. So I guess let's look at Yu-Gi-Oh! in general. Most fans have problems with some of the things about Yu-Gi-Oh! We know that some people, we actually had a lot of people while we were working on Faith with Good Intentions, you know, saying that they wish they'd seen more of Taya. Um, Taya and, uh, and Mei both, and that the fact that Mei actually lost every single duel she was in, stuff like that. But what we were wondering is, if you were to change one thing about Yu-Gi-Oh!, what would it be? That's a tough one, because I actually didn't realize until you mentioned it that um, my lost every duel she's in. That's that's not good to me. That's not okay to me. I definitely, that's, I, I'm with whomever said that. But I guess it, I'm going to be selfish. If I was going about the series, I would have had in Battle City. Right. And it's not just because it's my favorite and I want him to feel good about himself. There's there's more to it than that. I think that the the story itself, and of course, hindsight's twenty twenty. Armchair General over here telling an author how to do his work. But um, I think that it the story was done a disservice by having um, Yami or Atem or whichever name you want to give him. Uh, he he wins everything that he's part of. He only loses once in the Doma arc, I believe, and that's it. Every time he duels my favorite, he wins pretty handily. But there's a point of the story that Battle City was the closest um, of the times that they 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 face each other. That's the closest they come to being equal. And because of that, I think it would have actually been a good narrative move to have Yami lose. I think it would have been telling and it would have given the story itself a bit more depth, I think, because having your hero constantly win at, and, and constantly overcome every conflict they come across, even if it's really hard, and it is in a lot of the uh, duels we see, there's a lot of trouble that he has to go through to win, but he always does win. And I'm not sure that that teaches the right lesson. So I would have had Seto win, and also I would have wanted to see Seto face uh, Malik Ishtar in the arena. That would have been fascinating to me, and I would have loved it. So um, I'm going to say that's that. I think that's my one change. I, I would have Seto win his tournament. And it actually makes sense. I mean, throughout the Yu-Gi-Oh series, we always expect, you know, whenever Yu-Gi and Jami went into a duel, we kind of expected them to win. So a little surprise there <laughs> would have been nice. Okay, to be fair, Yami lost against Yugi at the end. But, uh, that you know. doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> that so doesn't count. <laughs> it was it was the ending. So, yeah. um, trust me, if you wanted to just talk about this, we could fill a whole podcast with things I would change <laughs> about the story if I could. But uh, that's my one, I guess. That that makes sense. So, other than Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, what other animes or games are you a fan of, and do you have any fanfics for them? Well, you know, as far as fanfics go, I'm pretty, I'm a, I'm a one trick pony a lot. I mean, I have some, I'm not gonna, well, that's actually not fair. My most popular stories actually aren't Yu-Gi-Oh! But as far as recent years go, I've been pretty, um, pretty singular. But, um, as far as games go, you know, you mentioned Final Fantasy. That's a big one for me. Um, that is a, uh, one of my favorite uh, game franchises. I've been following it since I was little. And there's a lot in that uh, franchise that I really enjoy, as not just as a, a consumer, but as a as a writer. Um, 
you know, I, I, I got into fan fiction very early and it shaped how I look at media because I'm always looking at a new thing, a new show, a new game, a new book. I was like, what? Could I write this? Could I write for this? Could I, you know, add something to the tapestry, so to speak? And, uh, and Final Fantasy in particular is one that I would definitely like to. I don't have any stories written for Final Fantasy yet, but I would like to change that in the near future. So um, uh, 14 and 15 are on my radar at the moment. Uh, That's uh, good to hear. We have a lot of 15 fans actually um, following Fanfic Radio, so. Oh, very good. You have excellent taste. <laughs> um, I I love the game. There's there's a lot of buzz about you know negative feedback and things, but I, I think it's nonsense. So good good on uh, good on your list. I guess back to fanfic writing, like we said in the introduction, we consider you one of our veterans, you know, one of the longest experiences with uh, fanfics, fandoms. Um, what advice would you give to those who are just starting out? Well, to anyone who's just getting started, I would say when when you're getting started writing, there's a lot of emphasis, typically, I'm not saying for everyone, but for a lot of people, myself included, there's a lot of thought about who the audience is and whether anyone will like it and that can freeze people up i would say don't worry about your audience don't worry about what people will think of it you as the author are the first reader and because of that you have a duty i think to appeal to yourself first so when you're thinking about what kind of story that you want to write don't listen to that little voice in your head that says this is dumb or it's been done before or no one will like it or any other thing like that. If you like it, if the story you have in your head is appealing to you, that's enough. Write the story you would want to read. And if you do that, then the, the right people will find you. Your audience will find you. And if they don't, well, they don't know what they're doing because I think any, any creator knows what they like and they get started because of that. And that's the most important thing I think that is for people to remember is you are allowed to be a fan of your own work. Write what appeals to you. That's that's my f bit of advice. And it actually shows. I mean, I've read a lot of fanfics where people seem to be catering to other tastes without considering their own. And you can tell the emotions mm -hmm. are not quite there. It's a little bit dry. Um, but when an author is actually passionate about what they're doing, you can actually tell. And, I, and, I, and I, I speak from experience of doing both because I have written passion projects that were all for me. And then I've also written stories that I wasn't particularly fond of, but they were popular or they got a spike of popularity and I kept going long after I think I should have stopped. But I didn't because I had an audience. They were waiting for me. And even though I didn't have any particular passion for the project anymore, I kept going and kept going. And kept going and eventually burned myself out on one of my favorite stories because I and I'm not talking about my story I'm just talking about the, the, the franchise in general uh, Naruto I can't really get into anymore because I burned myself out I definitely I, I speak from both sides of the fence on this one make sure you like what you're writing well since we're actually recording this what like uh, four hours before the new year <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we're wrapping up 2016. We're kicking off 2017, actually, in a few hours. You know, any any special plans you would like to share with your fans or, you know, any special tw last 2016 moments, I guess? Well, to anyone who's followed my work, um, I know there are a lot of projects that I haven't touched in a long time. I do intend to fix that. That is definitely on my list of New Year's resolutions is to uh, fix my, my tendency to let a story lay stagnant for far too long. But as far as uh, new things go, this is actually a big thing for me that I would like to tell anyone who is interested in, in my work. If, if you like the story that uh, these fine folks are putting together into an audio drama form, then keep an eye out because uh, this coming year, 2017, is going to be my big push for an original novel so that would be awesome and you know we will give you a shout out when you have more details mm. all right well I'll, I'll have to keep you posted then but that is my big thing so anyone who's been following me for any amount of time i'm going to try and put myself into the ring so to speak and see what happens that way and uh we have actually a special request from uh, one of the fanfic radio team 
to, mm. you know, follow with kick a hole in the sky because it's her favorite. So um, I love that story. Thank you very much. We actually have uh, just random fact. We wanted to do kick a hole in the sky in the beginning, but it turned out that um, casting little kids is a little bit hard. So <laughs> I, Mokuba, I can imagine. Yeah, Mokuba was very, very hard. He was too young. Um, yeah, he, he starts the story at three years old, so I guess I understand that. <laughs> yeah, we had two options. It was either we move on to a more mature timeline, or um, we would get, you know, someone who is pretending to be a three-year-old, which didn't sound very good. Yeah. A little, so. little difficult, I would assume. So sorry about that, but yeah. it was important to me. That one actually is very personal because it's... Um, I'm banking on my personal experiences, tangentially, admittedly, uh, with the adoption process. So it's, it's a big deal for me. So that's what that whole story is about, which is one reason why I'm definitely taking my time with it. Uh, the timeline is not going very fast. No, that, that makes sense. We actually like that, reading it. Um, and especially actually what like Pegasus in that in that fanfic is, is phenomenal. Great job on that. And uh, thank you for taking your time with it because we don't want it to be butchered. So. Oh no, I, I have big plans for that one. So uh, fans of uh, Kick a Hole in the Sky, there's there's a lot more. I've got I've got plenty for that one. That's a big deal for me. So I think we've reached the end of the interview. Thank you again for doing this. And thank you again for actually giving us uh, permission to do Paved with Good Intentions. Um, it's a fun project. Your support for us, I guess, is uh, really appreciated. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for for doing this. I think that, you know, I, I write my stories to try and make people's days just a little bit better. And uh, if, uh, if there are people out there like, 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 like you folks trying to put together something special using my work as a springboard, well, I guess I've done my job. So thank you very much. Um, and thanks for having me. This was a, this was a fun experience. I've never, I've never been a part of something like this before. So this yeah. was a lot of fun. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs>